Hello, good morning brothers and sisters. Welcome back to another video. My name is Carmen and this is Christ-based healing. Welcome. I hope that you are having a fabulous week so far. I apologize that the videos have been inconsistent. Next week I should be able to get on a more regular schedule. We have uh, a guest visiting us and so I want to spend as much time as possible with her and it just makes it difficult for me to get videos done every single day but I do have lots to share and uh, today I wanted to come on to talk to you guys about being an image bearer and whose image do you bear because I think it's an important question and something that we can tangibly take a look at in our own life to make sure that we are in fact following in the steps of our Lord and Savior. So let's talk a little bit about what it means to be an image bearer. So in the Bible, we are told that we are made in the image of God, right? Um, and then it talks about us being image bearers. And really what that means is that we reflect something of God's nature or character to the rest of the world, that we are a reflection of the goodness of God if we are operating in His will and in His Spirit. Everything good that comes from humans comes from God. Um, if you haven't read yet uh, Dr. Scott Peck's uh, The People of the Lie, you can also go to YouTube and he has done an audio version of it. So if you've got a long commute, you can listen to it back and forth. It's about four hours long, but it's really an incredible look at uh, human evil. And I really do recommend you watch it, uh, listen to it, or read it. If you have found my topics on narcissism and the Antichrist spirit interesting at all, um, then definitely look at this. It is a uh, clinical view like a clinical psychologist looking at his patients but he really uh, dissects what's happening in his consults and I think that um, you'll find it really valuable I certainly did so just a little plug there um, just to know that there is a spectrum right we've got people who are trying as much as they can to act and behave like Jesus who is the epitome of goodness and then we have uh, those people who are on the spectrum closer and closer to evil which would be the Antichrist and the question today is well where do you fall right and so who are you imitating who are you mimicking now, as I say that, some of you might think like, oh, I don't imitate anyone. I'm my own authentic self. Um, but that's not true, actually. One thing that uh, if you're interested in, in human psychology, I really would look at um, the fact that uh, humans learn um, very much through what's called imitation, imitation learning. Um, this is something that as children allow us to develop skills and allow us to speak and allow us to walk. It's because we look at our caregivers and the other people in our environment and we imitate them. It's also why it's so important for you as a mother or a father with a child to imitate your child. There's an element of being seen from the person being imitated. It makes us feel more comfortable. There's definitely a social connection there. So if I am smiling, like right now, and I'm sharing uh, a story with you, and you're frowning, this is going to reflect poorly back at me. I'm going to have a difficult time understanding because I'm sharing something good, but you're not reflecting that back, which means we're on the wrong page we're not on the same page together right versus if I'm sharing something fun and you're smiling back at me then there's this connection I feel like we're in the same moment together and we're feeling each other and so for humans it's very important that we feel this connection and we feel this connection the most when we are like imitating each other or in the same type of flow so as humans we're always kind of looking out into the world and we are assessing and reassessing ourselves, usually subconsciously, and we are making changes to fit in. Humans are social creatures. We're not meant to be alone. And so 
we want to be in a community and we will make adjustments in order to make that happen. And the narcissist is no different. While their motives are different, their ability to understand what social norms are and what is expected of them is not compromised. They are not unintelligent and they know what they're supposed to do. This, And you know this because they act differently when there's a crowd, okay? Somebody who is abusive to you in private will likely be able to keep a lid on that when there's other people around because they intellectually understand that it is not appropriate and that society as a whole does not like abuse. However, their motives for not abusing you are simply selfish in nature. They just want people to view them as a good person versus, I would say, probably uh, the majority of us, or at least those of us who are not narcissistic, we don't hurt people because intrinsically we still have the conscience from God and we know that it's wrong and we feel guilty when we do these things and we don't like to see the people we care about hurt. And so the restraint comes from God first and foremost. And then because we have been um, imitating the Lord over time, our own spirit doesn't want to do those things and our own spirit restrains ourselves from doing those things because we know that it's wrong. Okay, so understand that we're always uh, being influenced and we're always slightly adjusting ourselves and you can see this in society i don't really watch a lot of uh, like mainstream television or anything like that and i'll explain why in a minute but i can always tell when there is like a new um, trend of some sort whether it be like a, a way of saying something or a way of looking um, because there's a lot of people who do it you know for example there's this phrase where people say, oh, 100%. You know, this became kind of a catchphrase where many people would say it and you would hear it all the time. Or people who are dyeing their hair like, you know, pink or blue. These are not, um, oh, cute bird. Hi, buddy. These are not like normal hair colors. And so for you to feel like you want to dye your hair pink, it's because you're being influenced by somebody else and I guess this this little guy is in agreement with me <laughs> um, so you know I would say pay attention uh, over the next couple weeks to the things that you hear uh, regularly that other people say and you'll be able to pick up on the things that people are um, imitating and, and um, mimicking and we do it because we like it there's an element of uh, subconsciousness yes but there is a conscious decision too much of the time where we look at some somebody maybe a celebrity and we see their appearance and we think to ourselves oh if only I could look like that then I feel like that is who I really am and then we maybe color our hair or cut our hair or we put on different clothes because we feel like the costume is what's missing even though it is the God-shaped hole in our heart that we're trying to fill if we don't have that fixed then we're going to be looking for external things to fill that empty feeling that feeling that something's missing and oftentimes we do it through the way that we look we think that if we can change our appearance in some way whether it be um, a seemingly minor way like giving ourselves a new hairstyle or a very extreme way like changing our gender um, we are trying to fill a hole that something is missing we feel incomplete we feel like we are not who we are supposed to be and the reason why you feel that way is because you aren't complete if you don't have Jesus if you have not come to a saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ your mind has not been made right through repentance and changing of what you see as being real and true and valuable then you're always going to be searching for something outside of yourself. It is the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, that fills that void, that fills us to completion, that gives us, when Jesus says, uh, a peace that surpasses all understanding, that gives us joy, which is different than happiness. Joy is the ability to feel um 
blissful, contentful, you know, the feelings of um, peace and happiness despite circumstance. Happiness comes from circumstance. It means that the things in our lives are in such a way that we feel happy with them. Joy is different. And the Lord promises us an abundant life, not a happy or perfect life. And so I definitely have an abundant life, but it doesn't mean that every single day everything goes well for me. It means that abundance just means that there is um, a life in abundant, really, that there's a lot going on. There's a lot to explore, a lot to experience. It's not boring in any way. And so that's the promise of God. And without that, there is a a lack. And I know that because I spent 37 years with a God-shaped hole in my in my heart, in my soul, in my being, and I was led to a lot of addictions because of it, because I wanted something um, to be able to, to stop that empty feeling that I had inside me. So I want to talk to you guys a bit about what you can do in terms of being mindful of what is influencing you. Because again, we want more than anything, if you are a true Bible-believing, born-again Christian, if you really understand the uh, Word of God and you believe it, then you know that we are to be in the world but not of the world. We are to remain separate. And we do that by drawing closer to God and further away from the world. It's not a matter of isolating yourself from other people. Where I am, I'm around people all the time, and most of them are not believers. The point is that I can hopefully plant seeds and try to influence them. This is what God would like all of us to do is to be able to share, to reflect back to people the nature of God, to share God's word, and to provide them the opportunity to make a different choice moving forward, to choose God instead of the world. At the same time, I must protect myself from their influences. So we want to be influential, not influenced, okay? And you can only be influential and not influenced When you stand in the armor of God, if you haven't read Ephesians 6, please do that um, because it really is important that you don't get swept up in what's happening in the world. And our primary influences, I'll talk about, uh, you know, primary and secondary of what is helping kind of mold you as a person. The first thing is our like one-on-one Um, interactions. And so first and foremost, the most influential people in your life have been your parents because they uh, raised you um, or whomever your uh, guardian is. If you were not raised by your parents, if you were raised by somebody else, that person would have the largest amount of influence over who you are today. And you may think, no, no, I didn't really pick up anything. But, uh, you know, it's important that we understand how humans work and how humans work is we learn by what we see and this is why for a lot of people if you were raised in a narcissistic household for example uh, you will have many people call them like narcissistic fleas but you will have some traits that you picked up usually unknowingly so you may have picked up some traits from the narcissist from simply observing them because again we are very moldable, malleable people, our minds. It's, it's a good thing. and it, It's what will allow you to change uh, now that you can see where the problems lie. But understand that right now there are things in your psyche you operate in a certain way. Um, and so if you can be aware of that, then you can change that. But understand that if you grew up in an unhealthy environment, then there are parts of you that need to be fixed, essentially. It will need to be rechanged. Again, this is why God says we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. As you sit in the Word, and you can only do that by God's Word. This is not a, a spiritual thing. So if you're somebody who comes from like a New Age uh, type mysticism background or a different type of religion what's really based on 
your feelings and your senses is all very narcissistic. The narcissist believes that feelings are facts. And so if the facts go against what they feel, they will take precedent over their feelings. And it's very important that if you want to live in reality and truth, that you understand that facts should take precedent over your feelings because your feelings can be wrong for a variety of reasons. Um, many of them being how we were raised, okay? Because you may have a wrong idea about a lot of things, even like something like love, not because you have done anything wrong, okay? But because if you grew up in a home where love was taught that it is uh, inconsistent, that it is not conditional, oh, sorry, that it's conditional and not unconditional, that uh, abuse, you know, you can love somebody and still hurt them, these are not uh, true examples of love. And so you may seek out relationships that are harmful because you think that is what love is and you are drawn to comfortable things. We all are. We're all drawn to things that feel comfortable and we're kind of repelled from things that feel uncomfortable. This is why as you journey closer to God, if you're listening to me and you aren't a believer, um, but you're like, this girl's kind of interesting. I understand that <clears throat> much of what I say cannot be understood without the Spirit of God. And I know this from, you know, I had read the Bible before I had the Holy Spirit and I had read it afterwards. And it is an entirely different read when you have the Spirit of God to counsel you. Now, it, one thing that's really wonderful is that even if you don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you because you have not put your faith in the Son of God, you still have the Holy Spirit around you. And if you're listening to this video, it is because the Holy Spirit, God himself, the Creator, is uh, pursuing you. He's knocking on your heart. He wants to have a relationship with you. He is inviting you to learn about him, not who you think he is, but who he really is. And you can learn who God really is by reading his word. The Bible is the inspired word of God. Um, I will link a video at the end, uh, which talks a little bit more about the Bible, maybe will help you, those uh, intellectual people who think that the Bible is just written by a bunch of dusty old men. <laughs> I hope that video helps you. Um, but again, back to the influences, understanding that our parents are very influential if we were raised by parents who taught us to uh, observe Christian values and, and to taught us to be like Jesus, then that's very valuable and you have been given a lot of uh, great opportunities there which will help you in your life. But many of us who came to the Lord later in our lives were influenced um, by worldly things. Again, not because our uh, parents necessarily were evil people, but they didn't know any better like we didn't know any better before we were saved. And so we want to be compassionate to our circumstances, but we don't want to allow people to continue to abuse us. Again, go back to my uh, six truths the narcissist doesn't want you to hear. Um, you do not need to stay in a relationship with somebody who is abusive, and you absolutely don't need to just forgive and forget and move on and let them continue to abuse you, as the world would say. There are conditions to forgiveness. If you don't know what those are, please watch that video. I'll link it at the end too. But you are not required to allow somebody to continue to abuse you. But there is something to be said of being able to take a step back and to accept the things that happened to us um, and to, uh, you know, this probably goes back to my background in acceptance and commitment therapy, but to be to be able to accept your circumstances for what, there are, what they are and then to make a commitment to change those things that you can is the most powerful stance that you can take in life. And I really do hope that you will take that opportunity. And one of the uh, great things that you can do to take power back and take control over who you are as a person and whose image you really do bear is the ability to control what is influencing you. You may not have been able to control your parents, 
uh, because you didn't choose them. But understand that God chose them for a reason, okay? And it will help you in some way, just like my video, I said the scars that I have from my past have been what brought me to the Lord. So God can take what was meant for evil and turn it into good. But now, as an adult, you can decide the people in your life. You can decide who you spend your time with, who are the people that you are going to be friends with. God tells us not to be unequally yoked, right? He tells us that we're not supposed to be in close relationships with unbelievers because we don't want their influence on us. We don't want to be taking counsel from people who don't believe. And so making sure that the people you're spending time with first and foremost understand who the lord is and they have a relationship with him this is going to help you stay strong in god and then from the outpour of your conviction and your faith and your love you can share with other people the goodness of god being in the world but not of the world okay the other thing that you can control is what you listen to. Secondary uh, ways of being influenced are things like music, television, social media, news outlets, and institutions. Please be mindful of where you are learning things from. Uh, if you are in an institution like a public school, you are being taught a secular view. Same with university. Understand that there is a certain predisposition towards the secular viewpoint that's not godly and so you have to ask yourself if it really is worth going into these environments because you will become confused and you can easily be led astray social media television music these are one-way influences you are listening to me right now and i'm sharing with you my point of view you are being influenced by me hopefully in a positive way leading you to the lord but understand that the fact that this is not a two-way street and that you are just listening to me means that i am the influencer and you are the one being influenced and so make sure that what you are allowing to come into your world is going to lead you closer to god and not further away I would be very mindful of watching secular television and music for that reason. Even if you don't think that you're being influenced, subconsciously you are. Really pay attention to things that you say, and that will give you some insight as to what is really influencing you. Um, I've spoken to a lot of people because I have overheard them use the Lord's name as a cuss word because in movies, pay attention to the TV shows and the movies uh, moving forward, but it's awful. They will use the Lord's name as a cuss word and so many people, I hear them do it in their day-to-day -day life. And when I point it out, their response is, oh, I didn't mean anything by it. It just kind of came out. That that should be insight to you that you don't have control over everything and that's concerning right because we do operate relatively automatically in many respects i don't actively think of brushing my teeth in the morning i've done it so many times that it just kind of happens naturally and i can think about other things at the same time and this is true for much of our speech. We may automatically just say something because we've been watching a television show where the actors use the Lord's name in vain or some type of cuss word. Uh, many people I find swear because they watch shows and these shows kind of glorify having a potty mouth and they glorify being sarcastic. They glorify... Um, just putting people down and mocking people. This is so much in the secular world. And be mindful of that because it will change you. It absolutely will. Whether or not you watch all secular stuff, it will change you to be more like them. Or if you spend your time in God's Word and watching shows that really lift up the Lord, then you will start to look more like Him, okay? So that is my um, video today. I've kept it kind of short compared to normal. Um, I hope that it has been a blessing to you, and I really do pray that you will heed my warning and that you will start to pay attention to what it is that you are allowing into your life from music, whom you are admiring, um, you know, certain celebrities or certain people, ask yourself if they really are a follower of God. I have a post 
that talks about bearing good fruit and what that means on my Patreon page. If you're curious to be able to recognize somebody who is a true Christian in my video uh, channel, I have videos on three ways to know if you are a real Christian and a video on beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. So there's lots of content here for you to be able to determine if the people that you currently hold high in esteem are worth your attention and worth your time because many people are wolves in sheep's clothing. Many people are not after um, God's heart and they're not wanting to go out into the world and share the good news of Jesus. This world is ending. It's not going to be here forever. And whether that's in our lifetime or a different lifetime, your life will still end at some point. And it is my prayer that you will be able to spend eternity with the Creator God. Because if you do not repent of your ways and put your faith in the finished work of God's Son, who is Jesus Christ, then you will remain separate from God forever. And at the end of this life, you will be judged and that judgment will lead you to a place called hell where God is not there. And as I said earlier at the beginning of this post, we reflect, you know, the goodness of God's nature and character to the world. But if you are found to be wanting at the end of your life where you haven't repented and you haven't turned back to God, then you will remain separate from him forever and you won't experience any goodness. And I don't want that for you. And I don't think you want that for yourself either if you really thought about it. I love you so much and it is my absolute prayer that you will have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I pray that you will feel the peace of the Lord come upon you as I speak right now today. That you will feel the joy of the Lord. That you will feel the opening of the sky and that His light will come and shine upon you. I pray that you will be given testimony of who Jesus Christ is, that he is the Son of God, that he is the only way to know the Lord, the only way to know the true Creator God, because there's only one God, friends. There's only one, and he's not the one you made up in your mind. He's the one who created you, and he doesn't need your belief to exist but you need him to exist and i pray that you will come to understand that today i pray that you will come to a saving faith in what god has done for you and i pray so much that i'll get to see you in eternity i love you so very much have a wonderful day bye